In this lecture, we want to talk about ways of organizing and summarizing data. And the specific topic we're going to talk about with this lecture is how you, how you begin organizing qualitative data. So if you remember, qualitative data is data that is categorical, okay? Like you fit into a certain category or group, all right? So we suggest deal with qualitative data. And then in another video, we'll talk about how you uh, organize quantitative data. Okay, so to set the stage here, we're going to begin some definitions. And the way we're going to start organizing this is with this concept of frequency and then eventually a frequency distribution. All right, so three definitions here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take our data and we want to divide them up into the categories. Because remember, qualitative data is the categories you begin to. So this is what's called a class. And a class is one of the categories into which data is classified. Like, for example, if we wanted to divide our, our class up by, um, you know, freshman, sophomore, the, the classes that we would divide them up into is how many freshmen there are and how many sophomores. All right, so we're going to take all our data and put them into different classes or different groups. Next, this uh, concept of a frequency. So a frequency is the number of observations in the data set falling into one of these particular classes. Think of frequency, all it is is the count. It's the number of people who fit into a certain class. Then we're going to introduce this concept called relative frequency. All right, and all this is is the class divided by the total number of observations in the data set. So it's it's the proportion of values with, that fall within a certain class. So instead of just saying something like, oh, there's five freshmen in my class, there would be something like my class is 25% freshmen. So the five number would be the frequency and the rel and the 25% would be the relative frequency. Okay, so we have this concept now of a frequency distribution. So a frequency distribution of qualitative data is the listing of the distinct values and their frequencies and or, a little bit of addition here, and or the relative frequencies as well. All right, so we're going to do an example here to illustrate this concept of frequency and frequency distribution. So suppose I, I asked all my students in one of my introductory statistics class, hey, what is your party affiliation in, in politics? What is your political party affiliation? And these are the results that came. Okay, I had, let's just, just to be clear, there are 40 students here. And so they either said they were a Democrat, a Republican, or an other. Now this is just a raw string of 40 data values. And what I want to do is I want to take this and I want to put it as um, nice consumable information. I want to summarize this so it's easy to understand. All right, so to do this, what I'm going to do is construct this frequency distribution of this qualitative data. Because if you look back here, this is qualitative data because you fit into the you fit into a specific group. You're either a Democrat, you're either a Republican, or you're an other, like a libertarian or an independent. Okay, so there's three steps to doing this. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to list the distinct values of the observation in the data set in the first column of a table. This step one is what are your classes? What are the different groups? So we're going to list the Democrats, the Republican, and the other in one column of our data. They're in our table, excuse me. Then what we're just going to do is for each observation, we're going to place a tally mark in the second column of the table in a row of the appropriate distinct value. So what I'm going to do is once I have my table, and I'll, and I'll show you this, I listed the parties, the Democrats, the Republican, and the other. I'm just going to count. I'm going to go through. Whenever I see a Democrat, I'm going to put a little tally in my table to help me count through, the, through this by hand. Okay, and then all I'm going to do at the end is I'm going to count the tallies for each distinct value and record the totals in the third column of the table. And you can see here, this is what my frequency distribution shows. This tally column here, okay, is not really important. What's really important is I have the different parties, so the different classes that my students fall into, Democrat, Republican, or an other. And it looked like inside my class here, for introductory stats, there were 13 Democrats, so if you counted through this, you would get 13 Democrats. There were 18 Republicans, and there were nine students who classified as other. So all I did was I took this raw data right here, and I put it into a nice consumable table. Okay, Democrat, Republican, other, and I had the counts of each, 13, 18, and 9. All right, next what I want to do is I want to do this relative frequency distribution of it. So now instead of just getting the counts, I want the percentage. So all this is, is the listing of the distinct values and the relative frequencies. All right, so to do this, all you're going to do is you're going to obtain a frequency distribution of the data, which I have here. And you're going to divide each frequency by the total number of observations. So I'm just going to show you how to do that in the next slide here. 
So I take my classes, so I have the Democrats, the Republican, and the other. And now I want the relative frequency. Okay, so what this is saying is this rough, this is saying that 32.5% of my class was a Democrats, registered as Democrats. So I took the 13 Democrats to get that and divided it by the total, 40. There were 45% Republicans, which is 18 divided by 40, and 22.5% listed as other, okay, which would be that 9 divided by 40. For this right here, it's incredibly important to do the following. You have to make sure that your relative frequencies sum to 1 or 100%. So if you round one value up, just make sure to round one value down right? and just check. So you don't, you don't want it at the end to sum up to like 0.99 or 1.01. .01. So just, just be mindful of that. Be mindful of that. Okay, so obviously in this simple example, here's what I did. I started with this raw set of data here. Okay, which was just 40, 40 different uh, qualitative values. And I took them and I summed it into a nice table that showed the count of each, and then a nice table that showed the relative frequency of each. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to do visual representations of this. And there's two ways to show this um, when you have qualitative data primarily, using a pie chart and then using a bar chart. And they're, and they're very straightforward and very simple. All right, so what's a pie chart? So a pie chart is a disk or a circle divided into wedge-shaped pieces proportional to the relative frequency of the qualitative data. So here's what I want to do. I want to take this right here, and I want to put it into a pie chart. So basically what the whole idea of a pie chart is, is I'm going to draw a circle. And 45% of the circle is going to be represented by Republicans, 32.5% by Democrats, and 225 as others. All right, so the first one you're going to do is obtain the relative frequency distribution of each. We're going to divide that disk into wedge-shaped pieces proportional to the relative frequency. And then we're going to label the slices with distinct values and their relative frequencies. So I'm going to show you what that's going to look like. And primarily when we do these is we're going to use technology to construct these um, pie charts. And I'm going to have a follow-up lecture on this that shows you how to use uh, some technology to find these pie charts. But here's my circle or my disk. 45% of the class was Republican, so 45% of the uh, circle or disk is represented by the Republicans, 22.5% as others, and 32.5% here are the Democrats. All right, another way to do this is with a uh, bar chart. So a bar chart displays the distinct values of the qualitative data on the horizontal axis and the relative frequency, or you could do frequencies, it doesn't matter of those values on the vertical axis. So you're gonna have like a little L-shaped axis here, okay? So the relative frequency or frequency, it doesn't matter, of each distinct value is represented by a vertical bar whose height is equal to the relative frequency or frequency of the values. And this is important with bar charts. The bars should be positioned so they do not touch each other, okay? So going back here, when we go to, go to represent this data in a bar chart, the Democrats, Republicans, and the other are all different. Okay, so when we put, draw the bars for these, they should not be touching. All right, so the way you're going to do this is you're going to obtain that relative frequency distribution. We got that. We're going to draw a horizontal axis on which to place the bars and a vertical axis on which to place the relative frequencies. So for each distinct value, so for the Democrats, Republican, and the other, we're going to construct a vertical bar whose height is equal to the relative frequency of that value. And then finally, we're going to label the bars with the distinct values, the horizontal axis, the name of the variable, um, and the vertical axis with that relative frequency. All right, so let me show you this. So here's what we did. I'm going to draw an L-shaped, the first quadrant of the Cartesian plane. Along the horizontal axis, okay, we're going to get our, our different classes, which were the Democrats, the Republican, and the other. So what political party they belong to. Then on the vertical axis here, I'm going to put the relative frequencies, right? So if you look back here, I had to go from 22.5% to 45.0%. All right, so I'm just going to go by 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. Now the Democrats, I'm going to draw up to, going back, 32.5%. I'm going to draw my bar up to 32.5%, and this bar is going to represent all the Democrats in my class. 
Republicans were 45 percent, so I'm going to draw a bar up to 45 percent right here. And the other was 22.5, so I'm going to draw a bar all the way up to 22.5. So look what we've done in this class, in this lecture here. We've taken, I'll go all the way back, we've taken this raw set of data here, okay, that just listed Democrat, Republican, and other. And we first put it into a nice consumable frequency distribution table here, then a relative frequency distribution table, and then we showed this same data visually, first as a bar chart, or excuse me, as a pie chart, and then finally as a bar chart here. 